Yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. One job, I wipe your slate clean. You walk out of this house a free man. He's come to the other side of the world. <laughs> To finish one last job. I'm looking for a man. His name's Travis Walker. If only it were that simple. Apparently, he stumbled onto a trinket of some value in my jungle. Let's go. Whatever my father's paying you, I will double it. No. I'll quadruple it. No. I'll double it and quadruple it. Shut up. Why are you always gonna hit me? <laughs> the Rundown. You got the moves. I'll give you that. Avoid legal snags by telling people they're being recorded. Guys, I'm recording you, so I can, you know, blackmail you later? I don't know. Thompson, do you want to take intro or start intros? I can do the intros here. I mean, lead with the best, right? So welcome to the next episode. Is it the second episode or the next episode? Not sure what we're named. What, what are we number? Is this actually the first, first episode we're thinking? Or is this going to be... Yeah, you know what? Welcome to the fire pit. We watch movies. Um, Tom, um, I'm with uh, Josh and Dan. Josh and Dan, say hello uh, to the internet. You're just supposed to introduce yourself and then us. Way to take the spotlight, Tom. Okay, go on, go I'm, on. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, shut up. <laughs> I'm Josh, Q or Reginald, whatever. So if you hear any of those, they reference me. Um, hi. <laughs> Dan. I am Dan or Nigel. Any of those are fine. And so what is on the agenda tonight? Are we still watching Surf Ninjas? Or are we going to watch The Rundown? Or are we going to watch... That's a good question. I mean... Well, it's like I said, we could go one of three routes. We could do Surf Ninjas. We could do Rundown. We could do Demolition Man, because technically Tatsu is in uh, Demolition Man. Mm -hmm. um, we could do John Wick, because Super Shredder is in John Wick. That would open up Keanu. Mm, I... So... I think we need to build up to John Wick. I mean, you can't just go from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles to the John Wick. No, you gotta you gotta warm up first. You gotta stretch. You gotta really earn John Wick. Okay, so but here's the thing. I was also thinking about how obscure are we going to allow the roles to go? Because technically, we can go from Turtles Two to Iron Man. Because apparently the guy, the actor who was in the Razor suit was also a stunt coordinator for Iron Man. So we need to establish some rules. Okay, I don't. I think if they've gone from being in front of the camera to behind the camera, that doesn't count. Well, this is where it gets tricky, too, because we are going to get into positions where you have an actor who... That's it. That's the only connection. You just have a whole bunch of uh, nobodies and nothing. I mean, if we decide, say, Bruce Campbell in one film, we decide to uh, have Bruce Campbell. We watch Evil Dead. Okay, cool. I should know. Never mind. Strike that. Strike that. Because, yeah, uh, we got Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah, we got Raimi. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so. But the, the point remains, so, eventually we're going to get to someone where it's like, this guy's done nothing else. These actors have done nothing else. This director, he did commercials. And are we going to watch a commercial one then? No. So I think we can squint a little bit if we get to that corner. But again, I don't. So know let's say okay. Right we'll, we'll, we'll make we'll make them loose rules then. Loose rules. So we'll start with the loose rule that the person we have to branch off from has to be on screen. You have to physically see them. So you can use Robert Downey Jr. hypothetically because he is on screen and, air quotes, in the Iron Man suit. But you can't use his stunt, stunt double who also did everything else because he, he was technically on screen, but he wasn't on screen. Okay. Now, again, loose rule, but uh, at the same time, they have to be on screen for more than 30 seconds. So, like, quick cameos, like... Steven Seagal, an executive decision, would barely qualify as being a good stepping off point. Oh, I like okay. that. Ernie Reyes yeah. Jr. in the rundown works because he's in the movie for like five, maybe ten minutes, but he's not a huge role in the movie. 
Now, if we wanted to do headline rolls, it's going to get a lot tighter. So then it would technically, for argument's sake, let's say we watch the rundown tonight. And then because The Rock is in the rundown, we decide next week we're going to watch uh, Mummy 2. Mummy 2, The Scorpion King, or whatever it was called. It did Rock? Does Rock technically count? Because he's only got like maybe a couple seconds, a couple minutes of screen time total. Well, he would. I think he would qualify because he has that whole opening scene where he... Uh is like doing the whole right. fighting everything where he's in person. So he's on screen for more than like a minute. Yeah, that's the only time you actually see his person. And the second time yeah. you see him in the movie, he's all CG. Because if you do technically go one round, and I don't know any other movies this guy played in, but do you remember Pirates of the Caribbean? Was it was it not was it Pirates or was it, or no? It was uh, Forty Seven Ronin. Oh. Remember that one actor who had all the fucking tattoos. He was on a poster, like the skull tattoo and everything. He was on a poster, and he was advertised heavily in the film, but he's in it for literally a single shot. I know who you're talking about. Even, oh, yeah, he's like he's basically a nobody. So, no, he would not qualify. You couldn't use him to be as a branch because he barely qualifies, even though he was used in advertising. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Agreed. So, uh, crap. Because thinking about it, villain, that would cut out a lot of villains if we really limited screen time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because I mean, we we would we already admitted that we we would um we can all agree that Christopher Walk would be a good uh, springboard off of Rundown. He's in the movie for ten maybe fifteen minutes, mm-hmm. so he counts. He he would count. Yeah. No, I, I like this rule. No, it it still leaves us options. Well, keeps us honest. Uh, yeah. No, I'm cool mm-hmm. with it. Yeah. It gives no. us a legitimate route. You know, not going any obscure route, but it's still a loose enough rule to where if we get caught up in a Rob Schneider. Uh, pit <laughs> we, we can be like <laughs> but we well, it has to be unanimous all three of us have to agree well i was thinking too Agreed. it doesn't have to be a movie that rob schneider had a starring part in like he has a bit part in say big daddy or happy gilmore which are adam sandler movies yeah but would uh, Waterboy qualify oh shoot well he's i'm trying to count all the you can do it in that film i think he has three and each one oh we could do it that way we could do it that way they have to have at least at least three scenes in the movie how's that three separate scenes mm, maybe i guess yeah cause they don't quite make it yeah they don't quite make 10 seconds but we got no other choice yeah because like the rock technically that would be technically two scenes but the time thing would allow him to be in it Nigel, what do you think? It's got to be unanimous. I like the first idea better, that they have to have at least a few minutes of screen time or maybe a speaking part. Not a little more than a cameo, but not quite a guest starring role. Um, because We can do a speaking role. Qualify. I like that. Because then that would qualify The Rock. Because The Rock doesn't technically have any lines in Mummy Returns. He, has, he doesn't. He doesn't. That is true. Yeah, he doesn't have any lines in Mummy Returns. He has a few lines in what's supposed to be ancient Egyptian. And then at the uh, end of the movie, he growls a bunch, but he doesn't actually have any lines. So, yeah, let's put Steven Seagal back on the table too. So, and like sure I said, it, it's a loose, it. it's a loose rule. We'll, well keep it a loose rule. We have to all agree on the movie and whether or not that's an acceptable springboard. Okay. Well, let's just make Seagal's that the thing. A, Steven Seagal's not in executive decision for a very long time, but he has a pretty significant role in the movie. Or like Brian Cranston in Godzilla. Yeah. Significant I mean, role, very small. Or uh, who was the guy who was in Passengers? And, and Andy Garcia, or whatever his name is. He was like number three headliner, or four headliner. It was, uh, you know, J-Law, Chris Pratt, Martin Sheen, Morpheus, and then him. Andrew Garcia, I think is it. But he has literally five seconds on screen. Doesn't say a single thing. He appears in the last 10 seconds of the movie before the credits roll. But that would not be a legitimate spring board. Agreed. Yeah, I kind of, I'm okay with that. Because, like, uh, technically, we could go from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles to Iron Man 2 because um, what's his name has a not a big part in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but he's one of the thugs and he's um, he's got mm-hmm. a pretty good speaking role of exposition midway through the movie. And then he goes on to be our. Um, Justin Hammer in uh, Iron Man 2. Yeah, I mean, that would I, I think that would be a legitimate springboard. Yeah. Do we want to say springboard? Branch? I don't know. Whatever. Whatever. So Cat- I vote Rundown tonight. We want to do Rundown? I would rather watch that than Surf Ninjas. Rundown at least has some pretty I, enjoyable moments in it. 
I've never seen the rundown, to be honest with you. This would be a first for me, so I'm okay with that too. But let's look at the pluses, minuses here. What's uh, what's the rundown here? What are what are we getting from the rundown? Aside the rundown, from the rock, the rundown's a movie where the rock plays. I think uh, God, it's been a while since I've seen it. Doesn't he play like a bounty hunter or something that goes down to get? Yeah, he, yeah, he basically or, plays uh, a getter. All right, uh, let me get take this one. I'll take this one. He take he plays a guy who goes and gets things for people. Okay. Uh, bounty hunter effectively but not actually a bounty hunter so he's basically hired by uh and he's a badass obviously because he's the rock he's hired by this guy to go get his son who is in south america mm-hmm. the son being sean william scott so he goes to south america to get the son and hijinks ensue plot device plot device plot device end of the movie mm-hmm. so <laughs> it's I mean, got better acting and it's the rock's second head or is it his second his second headline film third if you count uh lion king or lion king scorpion king because he did <laughs> scorpion king uh he did uh mummy 2 scorpion king and then the rundown in 2003 i remember they they did heavily advertise this movie they were really trying to make uh the rock into the next schwarzenegger well, yeah uh, there's well, even a uh, scene where schwarzenegger is in it they, uh, they even said, Schwarzenegger said he agreed to do it because it was kind of like he was passing the torch to the, the Rock. It, it was pretty slow going, but they did eventually, Rock did eventually become a very bankable movie star. I think he's the highest paid actor in Hollywood right now. Because he had some, I mean, Scorpion King was actually a pretty big hit. It's not a good movie, but it was a pretty big hit. Yeah. The, rundown, the Rundown, and the, he did a movie right after Rundown called, I think, Walking Tall or something like that. Yeah, I remember yeah. that one. That was a good one. That's a really good movie. But then he did Walking Tall, and those were those are moderately successful hits. But then he did like a couple of strings of. Uh, yeah, the, <laughs> it was the Tooth Fairy. Yeah. Um. Yeah. yeah no, he got, he got in like, with the mouse. Yeah, he the got mouse, in with like, the mouse. No. <laughs> and the mouse did him dirty for a while. There, it did look like he was going to become the new Hulk Hogan of movies. That's yeah. 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 That, that, yeah he did uh, Tooth he did. Fairy. I forget the other ones. He had to do three movies, but then he came out and did uh, that one movie with the Chevelle, where he, basically the first thing he did on, on screen was walk into a thing and blow some dude's head off. <laughs> yeah, and then um, what really made him into the movie star is he correctly hitched his wagon to the Fast and the Furious franchise. Which you watch it now, it's like... saving it. Yeah, it's like you watch it now, it's like, when was he not in this franchise? He doesn't show up until the fifth one, because there was Fast and Furious, and then there was two Fast and Furious, and there was Tokyo Drift, and there was the Fast and the Furious, and there was Fast Five, and he doesn't show up until Fast Five. Can we all just appreciate that they have taken a premise of guys in fast cars doing fast car things and have milked, what, 10 years of films? Almost 15? I remember Fast and the, Furious came out in like 2001, yeah, dude. dude I, 19 I was, years. I was watching the latest one, the Hobbs and Shaw movie, mm-hmm. and it's a fun little action movie, but good God damn, it's stupid as fuck. But, uh, <laughs> oh my God, so ridiculous. It's so much but it's fun. so awesome. A superhero movie that doesn't star any superheroes. I loved the movie. I loved every minute of the movie, but god damn, it's dumb as hell. Dude, I know the first like, the first half of the uh, trailer watching that, I thought it was a Marvel movie. And I'm like, when they finally introduce Hobbs and Sean, I'm like, you had me in the first half. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think we are settled. We are doing the rundown. Yeah, let's do the rundown tonight. That yeah, sounds right. doing the so, rundown. All right, let's get this started, and I will give a quick rundown of the rundown. The mm-hmm. 1990, or 2003 smash hit rated, uh, there has a runtime of one hour, 44 minutes, rated PG-13, featuring Dwayne The Rock Johnson as The Rock, uh, Sean William Scott, Christopher Walken, and oh, hey, Ahsoka Tano ro- is Rosie O'Donnell. Actually, oh, that nice. is un- unconfirmed that she's Ahsoka Tano, but she has been confirmed to be cast in uh, season two of The Mandalorian. Nice. Now, uh, what's the connection between this film and... And the last film we watched, Josh. And I figured Nigel could take that one, since I did the rundown of the rundown. The last movie we watched was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of the Ooze. And it starred uh, Ernie Reyes Jr. in the movie. And Ernie Reyes Jr. has a small part in this movie. Nice. Now, I've never seen this film, but you guys have. Yes, I actually saw it on a first date back when it was in uh, theaters. I think this movie came out just a couple of months before I shipped out for Basic. And I saw this movie in theaters with a couple of friends, uh, mostly because of The Rock. (laughs) I was still a big, still am today, but at the time I was 
really big into pro wrestling and wanted to see The Rock's newest movie. Now, I remember what was funny, I always thought was interesting about this movie was it was titled The Rundown in the U.S., but overseas it was marketed as Welcome to the Jungle, which, as we all know, when they eventually rebooted Jumanji, the subtitle for that movie was Welcome to the Jungle. I forget if that was the first one or the second one. And second guess who's one. also in the second Jumanji? Who's that? The Rock. The Rock. Yeah, That's why I said oh. that was an interesting connection. It all comes so together I, there. Because I remember I was, uh, when I, I, w- I was stationed overseas when I saw this, and I saw it. Uh, w- it weirded me out because it said, Welcome to the Jungle, but it had The Rock and Chad Williams Scott, and it was the rundown. I'm like, that's not Welcome to the Jungle. and Culture shock type thing, because I, I didn't expect it, and I'd been sheltered in the U.S. my entire life. Awesome. So <laughs> this movie was released on September 26, 2003, so it's a little under 17 years old. Had a budget of $85 million. Opening weekend, it made $18 million. And I think a worldwide gross of 80 So it did it about broke even, it looks like. Nice. And this was Rock's, what, first big role? Second big role? It's his first, it's his first non-Scorpion King role. He, did a, he had a very small part in The Mummy Returns as the Scorpion King. He doesn't actually speak any English lines in that movie. And he's only he is a real person in that movie for like the first two three minute next intro. Uh, then then next time you see the Rock in the Mummy Returns is he's, it's all CG um, scorpion <laughs> monster thing that looks like early, early PlayStation One game. Early um, two thousand CG. Yeah, you got to get this is pre pre nine eleven CG too. Yeah, and I don't know why I'm using nine eleven <laughs> as the uh, milestone marker there, but it was pre nine eleven CG. So it's some pretty rough CG. You can definitely tell it's The Rock's face, but there's a lot of uncanny valley going on there. Um, oh my god! And, uh, while you the, can the scorpion the body looked re- more realistic. <laughs> while yeah, you can, he, yeah, and while you can tell it's The Rock's face, the PlayStation game or PlayStation Two game, SmackDown vs. Raw, here comes the pain. Mm-hmm. He looked a lot better in that game. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> True. <laughs> But it was an enjoyable movie, and it was part of the Mummy franchise with Brendan Fraser, so it made a lot of money. Yeah. Um, not necessarily because of The Rock, but he was heavily featured in the marketing for the Mummy movie. I know so, I went because of The Rock. So. Yeah. And so, <laughs> he, so he got his own spinoff movie called The Scorpion King, and there's actually been quite a few direct video sequels to that, but he's only actually in the first one. Um, and while that movie is not also, it's not as good as the Mummy movies. Um, it's not that good of a movie, but it was also pretty modest. So Rock started to get a little momentum as the next big Hollywood action star, the next big Schwarzenegger Stallone, which in the early 2000s, they were still kind of looking for that that Stallone, Schwarzenegger, Willis, tough guy action role, because all those guys were getting up in years, and in the case of like Schwarzenegger, they were moving on to politics. And stuff so yeah because this movie came out right before he got elected to the california governor yeah and this movie yeah. actually kind of serves as a uh passing of the torch from schwarzenegger to the rock um yeah. we'll see here in a few minutes here the rock's career after this movie he does another movie called walking tall which was a big hit and then he did a couple of other movies with bit parts that were moderately successful but then he goes on to do a string of flops and and as we were just mentioning that he was in danger of becoming the next Hulk Hogan of uh, wrestlers turned actor. Did he had a kind of a bounce back more recently, and he uh, hitched his wagon to the fast and became really popular there. And he's rumored to be um, the bad guy in the Glam movies. Um, uh, Black Adam. Black Adam. Black Adam. Yeah. Black Adam. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, he's been attached to be Black Adam. So The Rock is a bona fide movie star now. There's no denying it. You can love his movies, you can hate his movies, you can like some of his movies, you can only like a few of them. But The Rock is a bona fide movie star now. He really is the new Schwarzenegger, the new Stallone. He, he almost always plays a tough guy. He almost always plays a big dude that does wrestling stuff. <laughs> so, and well, and we'll actually be able to see more of his power because he has once once again hitched his wagon to Disney. And we'll be starring in the Jungle Cruise. 
it's another one of those Disney park rides turned movie. Yeah, and he's which does- we know the great success of Pirates of the Caribbean, mm. but we also know the exact opposite of what happened with the Haunted Mansion. Yes, you talking about the great Disney franchise of the Haunted Mansion, Josh? Who can't? I mean, we were all there premiere night for the Haunted Mansion. I mean, the lines went for days. I mean, it's, it was the <laughs> biggest Disney. It film yeah. since the Tooth Fairy. <laughs> yeah, but like I said, love him or hate him, he's a bona fide movie star now. He actually has some acting chops, too. He's done a few movies like Pain and Gain, so he's not just a tough guy. Oh, my guy. God. I almost totally forgot about that movie. He was in Be Cool with oh, John Travolta. Shoot. Yeah, the sequel to Get where he, Shorty. Where he yeah. Plays, yeah, where he plays the gay uh, bodyguard of one of the characters there, and he does the monologue that's actually a dialogue from... Uh, that cheerleader movie. Yeah. Um, 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 Bring having, it on. Thank you. Yes. Travolta's like, when you do a monologue, do a monologue. Don't do a dialogue. So we're getting to see prototype rock. We get to see like early stage rock. Literally, because you look at young rock when he was in his 30s versus rock. Now, he is tiny. He is a tiny human being oh, yeah, compared yeah, to he, how he become. He is young in this. Very young. All right, so do and do we have any other thing before we got to get started? Because I got an early, uh, make it an early night. I do work in the morning. No, uh, I'm good. I gave a I gave a pretty good biography of the Rock there. Also, anyone mm-hmm. listening to this podcast and hasn't noticed, uh, get the WWE Network and watch some of his wrestling matches and his promos. The Rock had a presence. There's a reason why he's a movie star. Oh yes, yes. Oh, dude, did you did you watch that one movie he was in where uh, fighting with my family or whatever it was? No, not yet. Is it any good? Yes. I enjoyed it, and I'm I not a rest, wrestling fan. And I, I absolutely love loved The Rock's cameo in it. Plus, it has Nick Frost. It's a win-win, guys. But yeah, let's watch this yes. movie. Ah, thanks for joining for this episode of Fire Pit. This episode's sponsored by... Well, no one. We don't have anyone sponsoring yet. Maybe we'll get there eventually. Not today. Maybe tomorrow. Probably not tomorrow. So, Tom, what you drinking tonight? I'm just sticking with coffee right now. I'm drinking Line and Kugel's Summer Shandy. My oh, favorite part of the summer. Nice. Yeah, it is getting to that point. Yeah. It's Shandy and IPA season. So, we are actually watching this while quarantined on Sync Lounge. So, shout out to Sync Lounge for allowing us to watch this in sync. Not the boy band. Um, together. Which this is our, what, fifth weekend in a row doing this? Yeah, yeah, because we started with Guyver 2, then we went to Josie the Pussycat. We're actually admitting to that on this podcast. Yes, we are. Hey, it's nothing to be ashamed of. It was it was a movie. film of this. <laughs> then we saw Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 1 and then 2. So, yeah, this is this is number 5. Is it, is it movie number five or is it week number five? This is movie and week number five. We've actually we've actually kept to this rhythm, guys. Yeah. Five, five weeks in a row, five movies in a row. No, this is – wait, no, no, you're right. Four weeks because we saw TMNT, then TMNT2. So. And we also nope. did watch uh, – it was kind of out of cycle, but it was – Smoking Aces. Yeah, that's the one. But uh, I think it's about time to get back to it, everyone. Appreciate you listening, and good luck. Hey, isn't that Misha from Dodgeball? And he just did the rock bottom. Hey, <laughs> this was a bad guy. Quick five-minute rundown of the rundown. This was the rundown. It was uh, an early rock movie, a movie where Sean William Scott tried to get out of his American Pie typecasting. Um, and he never did quite escape it. That's kind of why he's not popular or famous today, because he never quite got out of the whole, his character in American Pie. He's always the good-looking high school jokester kind of guy that's that's obsessed with sex. Slash asshole. He was always a douchebag, too. Yeah, so uh, he never kind of got out of it. You know, neither is The Rock, really. He, the Rock is still The Rock in a rock film. The difference is disenfranchised high school jock douchebag doesn't play as well when you're pushing 40. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Whereas, like, you know, if, if the longevity of, of the Schwarzenegger and Stallone careers have been, The Rock can play a tough guy well into his 60s. Um, yeah. Well, the Rock can play the, a guy who's in his late 40s to early 60s. Just look at the <laughs> look at the Expendables movies. They're all guys pushing 60 and 70. Still playing, <laughs> pushing 70 now, actually, yeah. Still playing action guys. So The Rock has a long career ahead of him if he wants to keep it up. Whereas, yeah, playing the douchebaggy 
Uh, yeah, school. the thing is, I've what was those movies? Goon, Goon One and Two. Goon One specifically, it was a fantastic movie, actually directed by Jay Baruchel, like where he was the hockey player, but he was uh, basically hired onto the hockey team to be the fighter bully. Yeah, right. The goon, if you will. Oh. We could go that route next week, because in Goon had Lee Schreiber, who also played in our favorite movie, X-Men Origins Wolverine. <laughs> you had me, and then you lost me. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely an early, like, well, The Rock kind of movie. It, it's, mm-hmm. it's a, it was a safe kind of role for him to take at the time, because it's well within his wheelhouse. Yeah. You no, know, it was, uh, you know, just... You're just going to play a rock. You're going to play the rock, but you're not going to be the wrestler. Oh, okay. Wrestlers turned actors. It's like yeah. sometimes they can't really try to make that transition. Hulk Hogan. Yep. Uh, yeah. John Cena. Yeah. But what's weird, though, is, is... And John Cena's doing it in his movies now, too. But The Rock kind of sort of plays his wrestling persona in a lot of his movies. He played... Like, his, his, his baby face character has always been smooth-talking badass who can back up his words by kicking someone's ass. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, his heel character is always bad, smooth talking badass who can back up his words by taking your ad. So at least he plays his wrestling persona. And Hogan's wrestling persona kind of didn't translate well to being on screen, but that's all Hogan knew how to do for the most part. Well, that's the difference between the characters, too. I mean, Hogan was this big, macho American hero drink your milk, eat your vitamins, go to bed early. Rock was just like. Smooth, cocky, um, people's champ, you know, $50,000 suits, gold rings, $100,000 sunglasses. So it was an easier transition to, like, the character we're seeing here. We just, like, tough guy, charisma, good looks, good charm. So easier for him to play that character than, say, Hogan in a Hulk Hogan film, film. And that's really, that's what you wanted in the beginning. You didn't want to see The Rock be an actor. That's why you never heard of him in Southland Tales. It's definitely early 2000s cheese, but that's what you want with The Rock. I don't think it's any more or any less cheesy than Roadhouse. I really don't. I don't Road think House. this movie's any less cheesy than Roadhouse was. I think that this was a early 2000s version of a Western, just like the road, Roadhouse was like a late 80s version of a Western. I would say this is more along the lines of a Road 2 sort of film. Movies with like Bob Hope and uh, Bing Crosby. Like, like oh, they, the road, yeah, Road 2 movies. Like, yeah, yeah, like, you know, you have these two guys, they're on an adventure, and then they don't start off as buddies like um, those films, but antics ensue, treasures to be had. I'm squinting to see it, but I mean, The Rock would be the uh, the Bing Crosby. Clearly, um, you've got Sean William Scott as a Bob Hope. Who was who was the actress from uh, Road to Morocco? I want to say Kathleen Kennedy, but that is not who that actress was. No, was she, Kathleen- that's, that's the chick who ruined Star Wars. No, that's Kathy Kennedy. <laughs> Kathleen, Kathleen Kennedy, yeah. But I really like the direction in this this film. It's like the way they explain it, the exposition, and everything. Mm-hmm, That's mm-hmm. my new favorite word of the day is exposition. It's a nice word right Undam- there. <laughs> and it's weird to think, like, Did you know, you... even back then, it's like this was a fast-paced movie. It's like, man, everything's moving so fast. Why don't they take their time? I mean, ten Dude, minutes in, I know. By the, action. Like the new uh, Terminator Dark Fate, it's like by the time, if you would have put these two together, you got, by the time that we barely knew who The Rock's character was, and tw- 15 minutes before we met Sean William Scott's character... They already have all three of the main characters together and are already, like, knee-deep into their or full sprint into their quest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like the first ten minutes was just like, you don't even know what The Rock is. He's just like a guy who's, like, talking to a famous person. And then the ass-kicking starts. And then opening credits. Like, you can't get away with that now. If you're not blowing shit up and introducing yourself in yeah. the first two minutes like moving on it's just like that's what pisses me off about modern cinema it's just like we don't ever give the viewer time to catch their breath mm-hmm. or actually explain something in enough detail no you're right we got to keep them aware of their phones like action blah 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 what's his character we don't care he's blowing stuff up Sean William Scott really kind of his career kind of went downhill after this it's weird to think there was a time when he was the hotness. Or this was kind of a movie for him, too. Okay, what was the name of that movie? With Chris Klein, 
you know, American Pie alum, guy, he thinks he ends up banging his uh, cousin or sister. Something. Yeah, no, sister. it was like they thought it was his sister and sister, and he like loses a ring and a cow's ass or something. So he shoves his arm up the cow's ass, and it gets stuck. Well, it's a wonder none of the American Pie actors and actresses ever made it famous <laughs> outside of American Pie. It's just like I'm thinking of their freaking mill moviography right now, and I'm like, Allison Hannigan is so goddamn lucky she was on Buffy the Vampire Slayer and then ma still managed to get work. Yeah, because Chris Klein sure didn't. No, the right. rookie of the year, um, he didn't. John William Scott. Jason Biggs, nothing. No. Eugene no. Levy is more, probably had a, the most successful career out of all of them. Yeah, we all know what happened to Tara Reid. No. She was in Josie and the Pussycats. Yeah, yeah, but what has she been in lately? That's, I mean, she's on, she had oh, a on Scrubs for a little while. Snake song, no, Sharknado, that's the one, yeah. And then Mirasor, or, no, it wasn't Mira Sorvino, that's... But, Me, Mina so, Sorvino, I, I know who you're Mina, talking about, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, she wasn't in much, she was in that, that movie with Kevin Spacey in the floating bag or whatever, that was stupid. The foreign chick, oh, um, um, Shannon yeah. Elizabeth, she, she ended up being in a bunch of sci-fi movies and direct video fair, so... It's like, wow, the American Pie alum is, you guys are not the breakfast club, okay? It's interesting. I was watch, re, watching uh, Brandon Sanderson's uh, lectures on world design, world building. Yeah. And uh, they talk about your character should have a handicap and mm -hmm. a, um, oh, shit, like a handicap and something else, a, a redemption arc, basically. Like, so handicap would be like, that has to stay with the character no matter what. Like, mm -hmm. they don't have a light or right foot. That's not something that's going to change. Okay. So this one, it was, it, it, not using guns wasn't a handicap. It was uh, something that needed to be overcome. Mm -hmm. It was a... Uh, flaw? You're a flaw. Uh, wait, I'm sorry. I was... That might be it. Flaw. Well, it's like every good character should have... Give me a second. I'm looking something up to a... Yes, a redeemable flaw and a handicap. But it's like, that's what makes the characters really pop mm -hmm. is if they have a handicap and a flaw and the handicap doesn't have to be a physical handicap it could be like batman not using a gun okay so rock so we're saying that his flaw is he doesn't use guns yeah. and go all out and his handicap is there's only one of him well it's like the gun thing is a handicap but it's obviously something that had to be overcome uh. <laughs> Seriously, I would have loved to have seen a sequel to this. Yeah, what would that have looked like, though? I, mean, I don't know. Basically, it would end up being a buddy cop film or some shit. Sean William Scott goes off on this weird Indiana Jones-esque adventure, and somehow the rock tags along. Or, no, Sean William Scott is going on some cockamamie, like, get-rich-quick, you know, con thing. He's either been conned into a thing, and he's like, he knows, he doesn't know anyone that can help him except the rock. So he calls in like a, a, I don't know, some kind of job where he's got to pick him, pick something up, and then the Rock shows up and realizes you tricked me into this, you bastard. And but then shenanigans ensue. Rosario Dawson shows up again because why not? No, it could still work though. I mean, I don't think, uh, I don't think Sean William Scott's busy with anything right now. Um, <laughs> yeah, the thing is getting the budget to hire the Rock. Although I would love to see like. A, a 17 years later, I would start 17 years later, or 18 years later, whatever it is. And then it's just like, see Sean William Scott chilling out on the couch. And that starts everything. And then he finally gets to see The Rock again and be like, you're bigger than I remember. <laughs> <laughs> and The Rock would be like, weren't you relevant? <laughs> <laughs> Um, this was just your typical safe action film. It was a good springboard for The Rock. Not not offensive, not great. I can see why it broke even, but didn't exactly make bank. So, yeah, it also came out at a very... I'd have to double-check the box office at the time. But it like I remember that was a season that was very... There wasn't a lot going on in the box office. 2003, I can't think of... I'd have to check... Here, let me pull it up real quick. Run down because it. I remember that movie had. Yeah, you know, see, domestically it only made forty-seven million. Which in today's money, that's. I mean, most indie films make that sort of cash. Yeah, 
And how now you think about it, forty-seven million wouldn't even pay for the Rock's dressing room. Yeah, right? he doesn't wake up out of bed for less than a hundred million. <laughs> yeah, he's he's not gonna waste his time with that. Rock was actually pretty good. He, yeah, he, no, he had a good. Yeah, he, he didn't he always had a personality, a great personality. I mean, Tom, you and I were wrestling fans. We oh, saw right. him when he we saw him when he was in his prime. The guy has a presence. We were talking. Uh, I saw people talking on r slash squared circle, which is the wrestling subreddit about the rock and how he wasn't the most technical guy in the ring. Like he, he's, he was no Bret Hart. And he was no Shawn Michaels. But God, you could watch him work a crowd. He knew how to work the crowd and really get them into the moment. That's why he, he was as good as he was because he, he just knew when to pop off the right move and all of a sudden had the crowd eaten out of the palm of his hand. You know, even when he's not in the wrestling ring, he just has a presence. He could talk, he could fight, he uh, he just had a look about him. And that just translated perfectly to the Hollywood big screen. He just yeah. knew how to do it. He just yeah, had he's, it. Yeah, he's very charismatic, very charismatic. Mm-hmm. And it definitely translates into this. Yeah, see, okay, so here here I got it. The, the Rundown premiered uh, the weekend of September 26, 2003. It was number one in the box office for that weekend. Top five movies was Under the Tucson Sun, Underworld, Secondhand Lions, and The Fighting Temptations. Number well, six was it, Once Upon a Time in Mexico. I believe it was Under the Tuscan Sun, but yes. Tuscan <laughs> Tucson. Yeah. <laughs> the movie takes place in Italy, uh, not Arizona. So. Tuscan. Tuscan. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Tuscan. Tuscan, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so, what else was going on in that in two thousands early? That uh... well, the next week, School of Rock premiered, and out of Tom, nope, time. I mispronounced that one again. <laughs> Somebody definitely has an early morning tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Then Kill Bill Volume One came out the next weekend. Oh, yeah. wow! So two weeks, and let's see by its. Third week, it was already at number seven. It dropped out of the top five. And right underneath that was under the Tucson sun. That the week after that, that, Texas. In Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let's see, October 17th, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The, the remake. You know, the 30th remake of that. The remake of the remake of the remake. Made $30 million. Then Scary Movie 3 and Radio. Yeah. yeah, I think it was. Yeah, yeah, it definitely wasn't the best year for movies. I can see a couple of reasons why it was knocked off its pedestal so fast. I mean, yeah. Kill Bill, just right there. It's like when um, Superman Returns was followed immediately by Pirates Two. It was like, it had no. Oh chance. yeah, uh, I was hoping Superman Returns was going to do amazing things at the box office. It would have if it hadn't been for Pirates. And if it had been a better movie. Both, yeah, yeah, I think I would go with the latter on that one. With Brandon John. Routh got shafted. Yeah. But that's a conversation for another day. We could lament for hours about what could have been with Superman mm-hmm. Returns. So what is the next film going to be? Because I think the consensus is, so far, if we're going to do a quick... Figure out what we're going to at least aim towards watching next week. Still subject well, to change. But what do you think we should watch next week? I kind of want to do a mix of bad, okay, and really good movies. I want to do all. I want to run the whole spectrum. And I'm sure our three uh, viewers. I'm, I'm playing this like we're never going to see anybody um, <laughs> watch our thing. Like literally, we're talking to ourselves. So <laughs> I just I don't want to watch shitty movies every week. <laughs> right. If I seem resistant to Walking Tall, it's because I kind of am. That movie came out when I was a. Uh, overseas and they watch that movie a lot okay well we like don't have a lot to watch it. i just was throwing well, suggestions it, out. it's a similar reason i don't watch euro trip mm-hmm. you know living in england at the time and having a uh, european themed movie out yeah we watch that every friday fair fair i mean i think um maybe for the next we can we can hover for now but i think going forward every time you know by the end of the the Another that'll be the uh, the other part of it. It's like by the end of the film, we see we have to have picked the actor we're going to springboard off of and their next film okay. and commit I, I, to I, it. No, no 
flying away from we commit to it i'm not okay with i i like the soft rule idea so i like because if we would have committed to surf ninjas I, 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 we'd have two-thirds of us who didn't want to watch that movie tonight <laughs> oh i no, it was um it was three-thirds don't get it was okay 100 uh, didn't, didn't want to watch it but you know we commit to it we watch it good or bad guys we gotta we gotta keep moving. We gotta know, keep moving. Like, okay, well, we if, if we ever Friday. get to a point where we have more than five viewers, like, or five five listeners, you know, it, like the that type who would at least uh, that aren't family members that we go, hey, come here and listen to this. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't count. Five people who just listen to us because they want to. <laughs> now I'm gonna go with six, twice the amount of actual listeners we have right now. So we have to have three unique people additional then we will start focusing our roles to more commitment until then i just want to hang out with my buddies and, bull- and shoot the <laughs> shit to to a movie <laughs> uh, i'm okay with that rule i'm okay with that yeah <laughs> all right so hover mode for now we've got some options we'll figure it out um probably the day of but until then guys uh this has been the fire pit I've been Tom. And this is Josh. Hi. And this is Dan. So uh, we'll we'll try to be more focused in the future. <laughs> no, we oh, won't. we're never gonna we're never gonna have any structure. <laughs> this, this is uh, if you don't like us, don't listen. <laughs> no, Josh. Fuck you. No, go away. No, that's the opposite <laughs> of what we want. Yeah. Don't piss off your what could be your core audience. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Good yes. night, everybody. Good night. <laughs> All right. Good night, guys.